when it all goes south, when it comes down to the crunch, do you want to be the guy who goes to pieces or the guy who stays cool? All your training is either progressive sensitization or progressive desensitization. All good teachers do this whether they know it or not. Some of it you can do for yourself, some of it you can't. Sensitization is all about knowing what happens before what happens happens. It's about improving your situational awareness, what we call early pattern recognition. Sensitization means learning to recognize and respond to increasingly smaller and more subtle cues. To sensitize, we start with the largest cue and work down to the smallest. We start the progression with a cue that the student can easily recognize. The amplitude of the cue will depend on the student. You make it just as big and slow and obvious as you have to for your student to recognize it and respond correctly. Once you get the correct response, you repeat that cue at that amplitude until your student can recognize and respond correctly, consistently, and reliably. And I'm talking about 100% correct. Take whatever time it takes to do that. It may take five minutes. It may take five lessons. It may take five years. I don't care. No matter how long it takes to put on your parachute, don't go jumping out of the plane without it. Once you get consistent, correct performance, it's time to up the ante. You decrease the amplitude of the cue, which makes it slightly more difficult. Use the minimum possible increment. You make the cue just a little bit smaller or a little bit faster. The new cue has to be close enough to the original cue that your student will still recognize it and respond correctly to it. Once again, you repeat the reduced cue until you get the consistent, correct performance you want. Then you up the ante some more. Poco a poco, yeah? One little step at a time. You repeat this process over and over with progressively smaller and faster cues. If you do it right, your cues will become practically invisible. People will watch and think you're not doing anything. They'll think your student is psychic. Now the flip side of sensitization is desensitization. Desensitization is all about fear management. It's the cultivation of cool. And by cool, I mean being emotionally impregnable. See, we're building competence, confidence, and control. Competence means you can do the thing. Confidence means you know you can do the thing. Competence and confidence lead to control. And we know that to become the locus of control of your opponent's behavior, you first have to be the locus of control of your own. To desensitize, we do the opposite of what we did to sensitize. Instead of going from the biggest cue to the smallest, we go from the smallest cue to the biggest. So we might start with a very, very low stress cue, one that the student can tolerate without triggering his self-defense reflex or flinch response. We repeat that cue until the student is completely comfortable with it and he can recognize it, respond to it, not just correctly, but in a smooth, relaxed, and easy manner. No startle, no flinch, nobody left on base. We gradually increase the amplitude of the cue to challenge the student's composure. We turn up the heat one degree at a time. We give the cue a little more suddenly, without preparation. We give it harder, faster with a shout, with a stomp of the foot. We try to provoke the student's flinch reflex. And when we do, we repeat that cue until it no longer provokes fear. Here's a classic example. I want my student to parry only when he absolutely has to, and to make the smallest possible parry and at the last possible moment, just as your opponent's point touches the fabric of your shirt, but before it pierces your skin. My student's flinch response will make him want to parry big and early, but big, early, unnecessary parries are easy to deceive and a waste of energy. I want him to parry small and late and only when there's an imminent threat. 
Now at the first stage, I'm sensitizing him to recognize and respond to an attack. I make those first attacks big and slow and obvious, and I walk my student through it, showing him exactly when and where and how to parry. He has to know how late and small he can be and still be successful. And once he's sensitized to the attack, I'll desensitize him to actions that are not attacks. He has to be able to recognize the difference. I'll give some cues that are just feints or preparations or just bullshit. I don't want a knee-jerk parry every time I wink, shout, or stomp my foot. I give some of those you know, bullshit cues, big and loud and fast and sudden. I'm testing my students cool. I want my student to recognize those cues as meaningless and do nothing. When it is not necessary to act, it is necessary not to act. Little by little, I mix and match the cues. I want him to recognize and respond to the attack, whether I make it loud or soft. And I want him to recognize and disregard what is meaningless, whether it's loud or soft. Remember, the student's instinctive self-defense reflex will always make him want to parry big and early. He's got to acquire the habit of parrying small and late. And that's the purpose of this exercise. Now there's a certain point at which you have to parry, and you have to know when that is. But no matter how hard and fast your opponent is coming at you, you still don't have to parry before the critical moment, that moment when if you don't parry, you'll be hit. And no matter how hard and fast your opponent is coming at you, the size of your target doesn't change. You don't have to parry any bigger against a hard, fast attack than you do against a slow one. Your startle response doesn't believe that. You're gonna have to convince it. Sensitization, desensitization. Increase your awareness, manage your fear. Be guided by reason, not driven by emotion. Be the locus of control of your own behavior. Be cool, Daddy-o. Real cool. <laughs>